Hello and welcome to my presentation. My name is Matthias Jahn. I'm head of the department chemical engineering at the Fraunhofer Institute for Ceramic Technologies and Systems in Dresden. And first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers who gave me the possibility uh, to give this talk. And in my presentation, I want to focus on our research on the decarbonization of steel production utilizing green hydrogen. And I want to explain why, um, especially the um, solid oxide electrolyzers can play an important role in this process because this is a very uh, efficient way to produce um, green hydrogen. When we look at the future energy system and the value chain, in the future, then uh, hydrogen, and especially green hydrogen, can play an important role. And for the production of this green hydrogen, we need renewable energy and we also need water. So this is um, necessary for this production. And we use here the electrolysis uh, process uh, to produce this green hydrogen. And in my presentation, I want to focus on low CO2 production, especially in steel industry, although there are much other possibilities uh, for the usage of these green hydrogen like mobility or and also the production of electricity and heat. First, some words on our institute. So as a ceramic institute, um, our research is focused on oxid ceramic cells and these cells can be operated as fuel cells, but also as electrolyzed cells. We are not only doing research on these cells, um, but um, we are um, building our own stacks and integrate these stacks then into systems, small scale um, solid oxide fuel cell systems like shown here. And um, also we are do, um, working on PTX processes and therefore we have built these um, small scale uh, PTX plants, what we operate in our institute for the production of high valuable products. And therefore, we couple here uh, the solid oxide electrolysis with the Tropsch uh, synthesis, for example. The motivation behind all uh, the development here, what we are doing on green hydrogen, uh, that's uh, here the reduction of the CO2 emissions. And we see here in the slide uh, that during the last decades, um, uh, this reduction is uh, stagnating here. It's not, uh, we have to need a very um, uh, large reduction during the next years. So one uh, driver to do this um, are the CO2 certificates. The prices for these certificates are increasing and they will increase during uh, next uh, decades. So what is the role here of um, uh, the steel industry uh, in um, uh, these, uh, for these CO2 emissions? We see uh, that the 6% of the global greenhouse gas emissions are caused by, by steel production. But in my presentation, I want to show you that with green hydrogen, we have the possibility to reduce um, these um, emissions very significantly. And um, when we look um, at the state of the art process, then uh, per one ton uh, of raw steel, uh, we have CO2 emissions of about 1.7 tons. And in an uh, integrated steel mill, uh, we have about 8 million tons CO2 emissions per year. So these emissions has a last, large impact here. So what can we do uh, to reduce these CO2 emissions? There are two approaches. Uh, one, of, uh, one approach is the carbon dioxide avoidance. And there we need a completely new process routes. And in this case, uh, we substitute fossil resources like, for example, coal with green hydrogen. And the other possibility is the carbon capture and utilization approach. And in this case, we separate uh, the CO2 from an existing process and we um, do not change this uh, production process and 
Um, this is an add-on uh, of, of the system, and then we produce can produce high valuable products from uh, CO2 and water. We are able here to produce hydrocarbons, uh, for example, in this case. So, how is the um, uh, green hydrogen produced, and what technologies um, can be used? Therefore, um, you see here the two different technologies uh, which are available on the market. Uh, we have the alkaline electrolysis and the polymer electrolyte membrane, electrolyte membrane electrolysis here. So these two technologies are so-called low temperature uh, electrolysis processes. And on the other hand, we have the solid oxide um, electrolysis. And the first two technologies are um, already available also in large scale, especially the, the alkaline electrolysis, but these two technologies need more electric power per one cubic meter of, of hydrogen compared to the solid oxide electrolysis. And um, uh, it's also possible here to produce directly syngas uh, with this technology, what is not possible with the other two technologies. So these are the two advantages. One is the production of syngas, um, what is possible with the solid oxide electrolysis. And um, also this high temperature level allows for high degree of heat integration. So we can also use heat. And this is one advantage. If we use this technology um, in the case of the steel production, because here we have this heat um, uh, available, what is needed. So a little bit insight here in this technology is um, shown here. So the, the charge carrier in this case um, are the oxygen ions. So we need a ceramic um, electrolyte um, to realize this process. And um, shown in, on the right hand side here um, uh, is the, the energy, what is needed as a function of the, the temperature. And you see the overall, uh, the sum of the energy here is, is uh, nearly constant, but we see an increase of heat that can be used and a decrease in electric power. So this is the advantage that at high temperatures here at about uh, 800 degrees C, uh, we need less electric power and we can also use heat. And um, this is, I mentioned before, an um, advantage, especially uh, in steel production. So when we look at our stacks and, and modules that we have developed, then um, we can uh, demonstrate it in our lab that these um, stacks are long-term stable, shown here in, in, in this diagram. We operate the stacks in water electrolysis mode and also in so-called co-electrolysis mode, which means uh, that we produce directly from CO2 and water, syngas, uh, which means CO and, and hydrogen. And you see uh, that the uh, energy, what is needed, the electric power here is nearly constant. It's a very low uh, degradation rate, uh, what we see here. So, but we have we do not have only uh, have to look at the um, uh, at the efficiency and also the, the costs. And you see here the comparison between these uh, three different technologies. And you see in, in our days here, the um, solid electrolysis is much more expensive than the other two technologies, but by new production technologies, the um, equipment cost will be uh, decreasing. That's what the, what the literature said. And um, what we uh, know about the possibilities on the um, optimization of production processes, because the material is, is cheaper than the SOEC compared to the other two technologies. So uh, we see here that in 2050, um, these uh, differences between the technologies will be much smaller than today. And also we see here um, because of the development in the next years that the stack lifetime will increase, especially for the solid oxide electrolysis technology, so that also in 2050 
the stack lifetime, the three different technologies will be comparable. What are the um, challenges here for this technology? What is the research focus? It's on the scale up of the of the systems um, uh, for this technology because especially here in steel industry, we lead um, systems and plants uh, with uh, about one gigawatt uh, electric power input uh, for the steel production and one steel mill. So we need new stack design and automated manufacturing for um, yes for this, this the scale up of this technology and make to make uh, this plants uh, efficient. So um, here on this slide you see the conventional blast furnace route. Uh, for the production of, of raw steel, what is based on this uh, blast furnace and on fossil uh, fuels. You, we use coal here and coal. And um, in the new process, the direct reduction process, where we can use natural gas and, and hydrogen, there the reduction is done of this iron ore is done by hydrogen or by natural gas, which means by, uh, by hydrogen and, and carbon monoxide. And with this case here, I will show later on, uh, where we use um, renewable energy, also we use renewable energy uh, in the electric arc furnace, then uh, we can um, reduce uh, the, um, the emissions uh, very significantly. And I will show this in the next slides. What have we done uh, for uh, in this process? Uh, we built a model where we can describe first of all and calculate uh, the the emissions in the conventional process, and also what we've uh, built is a new model in, in S and Plus um, where we can do the calculations for the new process where the uh, direct reduction plant is, is coupled with an electric arc furnace. So we started here in our calculations. Um, with natural gas as uh, reductant. And uh, then in the next step here, we couple the solid electrolyzers where um, we have um, water as input, but we can also use CO2 as input because we can produce directly as in the, in the gas for the production. And um, the process is very efficient uh, with this um, ceramic based um, technology because. Uh, of this high temperature, we can use the heat from the electric arc furnace, and then we need less electric power compared to the other technologies. So, and um, yes, uh, if we um, um, use a lot of hydrogen, then we need a little amount of, of carbon. Then, if we use no natural gas, uh, then um, but this is a very small amount of carbon what is needed for the raw steel production and this um, will be then put into here these electric arc furnace. So uh, with this here now uh, I want to um, show you our results uh, from the calculation. Um, the first um, uh, one, the first process um, is the integrated steel mill, so it's a state-of-the-art process and I showed this before that um, we have about uh, 1.7 tons of CO2 per ton uh, um, steel that is produced. And by using uh, natural gas in the reduction process, we have a significant reduction, about uh, 64%. And by increasing um, hydrogen concentration, then uh, more than 95% of the emissions uh, can be avoided. How much energy is needed for the process? Uh, first of all, we have again here the state of the art process where we have a lot of chemical energy, uh, what is needed. And um, if we use natural gas um, in the direct reduction process and couple this uh, process with an electric arc furnace, so we see an increase in electrical energy that is needed. And we have um, much more electric energy if we use 100% uh, hydrogen for the reduction. But um, um, the energy in, in total 
is, is lower compared to the state-of-the-art process. So based on these um, uh, process calculations here, we have also done an economic evaluation of the process. Um, and there we um, calculated here the, the fixed cost, the, um, the investments, the capital costs, and also the cost for the operation of the systems. And with this, we get the total production cost. And in this slide here, we see um, the, the production costs and with um, incentives uh, from, from the state, then it's possible um, uh, to reduce um, uh, these costs. And um, especially also here, electric piles uh, plays an important role and also CO2 certificates and CO2 tax. So um, in 2050, in this scenario, we see uh, that we have, for example, uh, for mid-range car, uh, as an example, only a price of um, 150 euro. Uh, what the, the, this car is more expensive than another car that is produced by conventional produced um, steel. So um, if we compare now the two uh, approaches, what I described before, the carbon direct avoidance and the carbon capture and utilization, we see here on the one side here, the reduction of CO2 emissions, and there with the carbon dioxide avoidance um, with, with um, hydrogen. So here we have the PEM electrolysis, we have the solid oxide electrolysis. We see a much, um, a much higher reduction, uh, what is possible compared to the carbon capture and utilization approach. And we need uh, less. Um, uh, the cost is, uh, is, um, is lower here uh, because we have here the specific cost of CO2 emissions um, uh, compared to the um, uh, route, that was the state of the art. And so we see here uh, that um, these costs are much lower compared to the carbon capture and utilization. So this makes um, this approach favorable, favorable here for the reduction of CO2 emissions and the solid electrolyzers electrolysis is here very efficient because we can use waste heat in this case. With this, I want to conclude. Um, what I wanted to show you is that um, based on um, green hydrogen, the industrial uh, CO2 emissions can be significantly uh, reduced, especially in, in steel sector. Uh, carbon can be substituted um, and hydrogen can be used as a reducing agent and the high temperature electrolysis has advantages because here we can integrate uh, the heat of other processes and um, we see that in 2050, especially in, if we calculate this for Germany, um, that there uh, the costs will be uh, comparable from the production of uh, with the standard state-of-the-art route and uh, the new route with the green hydrogen. So in context of the steel industry, the carbon direct avoidance approach um, is to be favored uh, compared to carbon capture and utilization and the solid oxide electrolysis technology with this high efficiency um, has advantages um, compared to, the, to other electrolysis technologies. With this, I want to thank you uh, for your attention and I look um, forward for the discussion. Thank you very much.